I'm Bill Stone, CEO for Stone Aerospace in Austin, Texas. I'd like to relate to you today some things we've learned uh, from robotic exploration of subterranean cavities on Earth and how those lessons might apply to the exploration of planetary lava tubes. Recent orbital images have shown clear presence of lava tube skylights on the Moon and Mars. There are obvious uses for such places since they represent potential human habitat sites uh, with isothermal temperatures and free radiation and meteorite shielding. So, how do you explore a lava tube skylight? On Earth, it's pretty straightforward. You get a rope, a harness, and rappel in. But don't make any bets on that being a realistic exploration procedure on Mars. One way we could safely uh, recon such places is with a hovering drone, but currently lift mass is an issue uh, and that will also be a problem on Mars until 3D mapping instrumentation is miniaturized. So we decided to investigate an analog environment uh, here on Earth uh, to test subterranean exploration autonomy. We've built three subsurface AUVs for NASA, all of which had to solve problems like navigation, guidance, and control where there is no GPS, and to perform critical maneuvers like rendezvous, docking, and recovery through a drilled shaft and an ice cap uh, not much larger in diameter than the vehicle. This sounds a lot like a Martian lava tube mission. Uh, this is Sunfish, a person portable six degree of freedom AUV uh, developed at our lab over the last decade. Uh, the main advance uh, made by Sunfish over the last four years has been uh, in fully autonomous behavior-based exploration in overhead environments. Uh, Sunfish is arguably uh, one of the most intelligent underwater vehicles uh, on this planet. Uh, it flies like a fighter, hovers like a helicopter, uh, and performs acrobatic maneuvers like no other underwater vehicle. Unlike existing planetary robotic systems, uh, Sunfish uses behavior-based AI to explore, not scripting. Uh, we initially uh, tested our exploration behavior ideas uh, in an underwater labyrinth uh, in Florida. Here's a view of the same scene, uh, but with the, within the uh, data space of the, uh, the robot. At the, uh, at the heart of the exploration process is situational awareness. We start by building a 3D model of the world around the vehicle. We then calculate a vector that the vehicle can move along uh, to create the greatest amount of new knowledge while not violating obstacle avoidance and other uh, mission failure criteria. The, uh, the white uh, sections that you see here represent those uh, vectors of allowed uh, transit while not violating uh, obstacle uh, avoidance uh, criteria. And it will finish here in just a second. Uh, so that same data can then be converted uh, post-mission uh, to a, uh, a meshed uh, fly-through. Uh, and this is that same uh, Florida and labyrinth uh, that was just mapped uh, by Sunfish in the uh, previous uh, video. This is roughly 160 meters uh, worth of traverse here. Uh, the tunnel itself is at a depth of about 20 meters. The average passage width is on the order of 10 to 15 meters. Um, and it's going to end up here at uh, 160 meters from the entrance. So uh, to recap what I've shown so far, exploration behavior in a simple morphology like a lava tube uh, can be accomplished with a stepwise procedure uh, as shown here. Uh, there are, of course, many other constraints that are operating in parallel, uh, but the main issues are the determination of where to go uh, to learn more about the unknown and not running into anything uh, while you're doing that. So what happens when it's time to get back and report uh, to Mission Control? Um, here is a video. This is the same section of tunnel, but we're looking down in plan view. Uh, now, and the vehicle is making these sweeps in 3D, uh, creating the uh, point cloud uh, map of the tunnel that you see right here. This is greatly sped up, of course. Uh, roughly, this was a one hour and 10 minute uh, mission for it to make a, a round trip here. Um, what you'll see here in just a minute, though, is that it will come up around the bend and then begin to uh, go home. So here we are just about there. And now we're coming home. You'll notice that it's moving a lot faster here. 
Um, and that is the important part that I'm going to talk about next year. We're just going to go ahead and let this video finish out. The white sections uh, that you see being created are the allowed traversability. And as you get into better known tunnel with less bends, it makes bigger jumps. And we'll come on to that here in just a second. So what happened uh, in that video? <clears throat> the Sunfish vehicle currently scans and moves in straight lines. Each time a scan is performed, it generates an obstacle map uh, at that waypoint and records it. The set of all obstacle maps are used to hypothesize which waypoints are visible uh, from each other. Each time the map is updated, the optimization recalculates all of the waypoint positions using pose graph optimization and reevaluates which waypoints are visible from all others. We call this a traversability graph. Sunfish uses this traversability graph to plot a course back home. And in general, we've seen five, 10 times uh, faster returns uh, than during the inbound uh, exploration. Once we had these autonomous exploration behaviors tested, the next step was to do it for real in a completely unknown, unexplored subterranean aquifer. Uh, we spent a month uh, in Namibia in the heart of the Kalahari Desert. Uh, our first test was at a site called Lake Aguinas, uh, which turned out to be a karst uh, cenote. Uh, it reaches a depth of 133 meters uh, underwater. Uh, it's got an hourglass shaped chamber. Uh, it's more than 400 meters from left to right uh, in this image and 200 meters in width uh, into the page. Uh, Sunfish created this entire map in uh, one mission. Our next stop was Harasib Shaft. Uh, this is a 112 meter freefall pit uh, coming from the surface down to uh, water level uh, at a water filled shaft that goes uh, straight down. Uh, from a floating raft, uh, we deployed Sunfish and it dove vertically uh, to a depth of 150 meters uh, before discovering a horizontal extension. We explored uh, over 100, um, I'm sorry, over 500 meters horizontally uh, into the submerged cave uh, at Harasib, uh, reaching a depth of 265 meters uh, underwater uh, before the cavern ended. Uh, the newly discovered chamber in the middle measures more than 100 meters tall uh, and 80 meters wide and continues for over 300 meters with a very rugged uh, breakdown floor. Uh, those dimensions are big in any cave on Earth. Um, here is a fly through uh, of the Harasib data uh, produced by Sunfish. Uh, the first part, uh, right until it gets very uh, fine here, was produced by LIDAR. Uh, the next two thirds of the, uh, the data were done with um, multi beam sonar carried by Sunfish down to a, uh, an absolute depth of 387 meters below the uh, surface. And it again ends with a breakdown collapse uh, at the end. Our final uh, target was Dragon's Breath Cave. Um, it has a rather inauspicious uh, small entrance uh, located in this karst field uh, in a valley. Uh, but 60 meters uh, straight down, uh, it opens out into the world's largest known subterranean lake. That lake uh, measures over 200 meters long uh, and 125 meters wide. And it's very deceptive in its size when you're in there. It takes a long time to uh, row a boat across that, that room. Um, we again established a floating, a floating uh, launch base uh, for Sunfish. The vehicle carried a four kilometer data fiber, uh, which was paid out uh, from an axial drum uh, so that we could observe its progress uh, and the real time decisions being made by the robot. Uh, although this term is properly uh, supervised autonomy, uh, Sunfish made all the exploration decisions by itself uh, and used its just created maps to return home. So this really was a completely autonomous mission uh, by the robot. Um, this is a profile uh, view showing the uh, primary tunnel uh, in Dragon's Breath, which reaches a depth of 205 meters uh, underwater. Uh, here's a, a plan view uh, of the same uh, cave showing the primary tunnel. Um, and in this particular case, the uh, black line that you see uh, in a polygon shape there on the left, that's the uh, open lake surface. And then the underwater tunnel proceeds uh, to the right. Um, it reaches a width of 175 meters uh, by 80 meters tall uh, in cross section, which is truly enormous uh, for any cave on Earth. 
uh, and proceeds to the north for more than 500 meters before the passage uh, pinches down and ends. And here is a, uh, a quick uh, fly around uh, the cave. Uh, this, this is a, a volume underwater of uh, 2.5 million cubic meters. Uh, and then this tiny little section up here at the top uh, is the entrance uh, shaft series coming down. In all, uh, Sunfish autonomously mapped more than 4 million cubic meters of previously unknown uh, subterranean aquifer. Uh, the lessons learned on these missions uh, directly apply to the exploration of lunar and Martian lava tubes uh, since they are morphologically similar. The code we developed is readily transferable to drone platforms uh, with minor uh, instrument changes. Uh, the research was supported uh, by Stone Aerospace, uh, the National Geographic Society, and the Schmidt Marine Technology Partners Foundation. Thank you.